From Hollywood, it's time now for Bob Bailey as... Johnny Dollar. You don't know me, Mr. Dollar, but you're going to. Well, I can hardly wait. You won't have to wait. I want you to meet me tonight. Where? On the waterfront, nine o'clock. Yes? It's dark down there at nine. It might be dangerous. Are you scared? Strange women always scare me. Where on the waterfront? Pier 29. Pro- That's where the Molly Kay was birthed before she sank. Molly Kay was my mother. Meet me at nine? I don't know. Blind dates never work out for me. I'm always sorry afterwards. You won't be sorry this time. Is that a promise? That's a promise. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, present location San Francisco, to the Home Office Marine and Maritime Casualty Limited, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Molly K matter. Expense account continued. Item three, $4.65, food. I needed it. It had been a rough day, rough from the standpoint of legwork. I'd covered most of the usual sources and usual angles, and for all I learned, I might as well have stayed in bed. The freighter Molly Kay had sailed out of San Francisco Harbor and gone down in the Pacific, and nobody wanted to talk about it. They were all too busy shaking in their boots and looking over their shoulders, scared to death. I was even beginning to look over my shoulder. Item four, 70 cents, taxi to the Embarcadero. Sure, I kept that blind date. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Here, keep the change. It was dark and lonely along the waterfront. The fog was down, drifting in off the bay, dimming the scattered streetlights with a damp haze and muffling the sounds of the city. Alcatraz, lost and hidden somewhere behind the murky, wet blanket, kept sounding its mournful warning across the water. And the night gulls seemed to cry out an answer to it. I crossed the siding tracks and headed toward Pier 29 and toward whatever was waiting for me there. Or whoever. The office and warehouse of the Brawley Shipping Company, owner of the Molly K, was about halfway out the pier. I'd been there earlier in the day and found it closed and locked. But there was a dim light burning there now. I headed toward it. Just about then, as I passed under the last wharf light and turned toward the office door, I started to get that old feeling. I'd had it before in other places. Once in the heart of an Orinoco jungle, in an alleyway in the Casbah of Algiers, one time in London, Soho, and again in Suez. Somewhere, close by, hidden by the fog and shadows, there was somebody watching me. I stood listening, straining to hear some telltale sound in the darkness. Nothing. But there were a dozen hiding places within a radius of 50 feet, and I wasn't fool enough to start searching them, not knowing what I'd find. I turned to open the door to the Brawley office. Get your hands up, Mac. He'd been standing behind a post right beside the door. Okay. Now, what are you prowling around here for? I was restless, couldn't sleep. And I love that foghorn. Wanted to get close to it. Knock it sort off, of... wise guy. This is a gun in your back, not a peppermint stick. Oh, don't say things like that. I faint easy. One more smart crack it. Wait a minute. Turn around toward the light. Sure. I'm always glad to oblige a sucker. Oh. All right, come on, let go. Stop, Stop it, you let go of that gun. You're gonna break my All right. Oh. Come on, get up, get up. Come on, on your feet. Okay. Okay, Dollar. So they're right about you. You are tough. Is that what they say? I've heard it around. And how come you jump me? I didn't know it was you, not till you turned toward the light. Just saw somebody was prowling around the office here. Who's there? What's going on? It's all right, Ellen. Dean, what are you doing here? I could ask you the same thing. Why, I just came down to do some work on the books and... Oh. This is that insurance investigator, Johnny Dollar. Yes, I know. What do you mean, you know? I asked Mr. Dollar to meet me here tonight. Why? What are you up to? 
Nothing. I wanted to talk to him, that's all. Down here alone, at uh, this time of night? Dean, suppose we talk about it tomorrow. Okay, that's the way you feel. Not a matter of how... We'll discuss it tomorrow. All right. Oh, uh, the gun, Dollar. Do I get it back? Oh, sure. Here you are. Don't uh, let anybody take it away from you now. Don't worry. They won't. I'll see you tomorrow, Dean. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Come in, Mr. Dollar. I followed her into a suite of offices that were a lot plusher on the inside than they were on the outs. Mahogany paneling, leather chairs, rugs, sofa, an open fire burning, small but cozy, like the girl herself. So we talked. The weather, the fog, the weather yesterday, how we like San Francisco, sparring type talk. Then finally came the tip off that we were going to get down to business. Would you like a drink, Mr. Dollar? I poured scotch for both of us, and the clink of ice served as opening bell for the first round. Mr. Dollar sounds so oddly formal. Do you mind if I call you Johnny? Johnny it is. And you? Ellen Brawley. I guess I am a little slow in introducing myself. But it upset me. Dean being out there, I mean. And acting the way he did. You're Captain Brawley's daughter. Yes. As I told you on the phone, Molly Kay was my mother's name. Father thought the world of her broke his heart when she died. Later, he named his ship after her. And now the ship has gone, too. Yes. Ellen, what about this man you call Dean? How does he figure in this? Dean Sutton, he's an exporter. I've... Well, I've known him for some time. He's not usually the way he was tonight. Jealousy always makes a difference. Jealousy. Sure, it's stuck out all over him. He just does business with my father. It was his cargo that sank with the Molly Kay. Grain, bound for Japan. Oh, I see. I've gone out with him quite a lot, but he takes far too much for granted. I'm a free agent, Johnny. I call my own shots. Yeah, I guess you do. So tonight you call me. I heard about the hearing, how you questioned my father. Accused him of sinking his own ship to collect the insurance. I didn't accuse him. It amounted to that, didn't it? I said I was sure somebody had done it. He put the shoe on his own foot before I even had it out of the box. What makes you so sure? Oh, a lot of little things that don't add up. What little things don't add up, Johnny? Oh, this and that. Did you know your father put a heavy mortgage on the Molly K seven months ago? How did you find out? Bureau of Records, Maritime Division. Now, when the mortgage comes due? Next month. He had to install new boilers. That's why he did it. And he'd have been able to pay it off after this last voyage. He'd also be able to pay it off after he collected the insurance and have a lot left over. You're wrong. You don't know my father. No, I don't. Do you know who holds that mortgage? A woman named Lu Tang. That's right. Been an owner of Shanghai, Lu. She owns a nightclub up in Chinatown. Quite a girl. You know her? Very well. All right, Ellen, let's quit circling around and get to the point. What's on your mind? I don't know. Nothing, really, I guess. I just wanted to tell you that you're wrong. About my father, I mean. If the Molly Kay was sunk deliberately, he had no part in it. I'll make a note of that, even though your opinion may be a little bit prejudiced. Well... Are you leaving? Might be a good idea, don't you think? Wait. Johnny. Yeah? I was sort of hoping we'd be friends, maybe. Oh, I feel very friendly toward you. Do you, Johnny? As much as... as much as this. That much, Johnny? That's uh, pretty friendly. I told you. I call my own shots. I know. But you didn't tell me you're engaged to Dean Sutton. I found that out from a newspaper file. It was all a mistake. It's his idea. I it? thought you always called your own shots. Don't go, Johnny. I, I promised you on the phone that if you came, you wouldn't be sorry. 
I'm not. Good night, Owen. Outside on the pier, the fog was thicker than ever. The wharf lights were dim glows in the swirl of mist, and sounds, even close ones, were muffled and hollow. I couldn't figure Alan Brawley, at least not completely, where she stood in this and the reason for the pitch she'd made. I left the pier and turned west along the Embarcadero. Mr. Dollar? Huh? Over here. Get out of the light. Evening, sir. You're out late, Mr. Hawkins. Well, I I was waiting around. I, I kind of wanted to talk to you. I saw you come in the taxi cab earlier. All right, let's talk. I hope you don't hold it against me, jumping up in the hearing room that way, but I was scared. Scared that... of what, Mr. Hawkins? I don't rightly know. That's the trouble. But there's something strange going on, Mr. Dollar. And it ain't safe for a man to let on he notices. The whole crew feels the same way. That's why they ain't talking about it. About what? Things that's happened. Things that ain't been brought out yet. And I wouldn't be talking neither if Bill Mack hadn't been a mighty good friend of mine. Bill Mack. He was one of the two men who went down with the ship. That he did. May he rest in peace. But you're wrong, Mr. Dollar. There wasn't two men. Bill was the only one. What? That Chinese steward, Benny Wong, he didn't drown. He was in that lifeboat that got to shore. Then the men in the boat knew it. Why didn't they say so? They were scared to. He disappeared later, and they was all scared to say anything. I don't know what's happened to him since... Here, back of this wall. Keep your head down. I crouched behind the concrete tide wall, my gun drawn, and peered into the darkness, trying to catch some sign of movement behind the blanket of fog, listening for some faint sound that might be the giveaway. Nothing. And to go hunting in those shadows against somebody who knew the waterfront would be about as healthy as stepping out in front of a truck. I gotta get out of here, Mr. Dollar. I gotta get away from here. Hawkins, wait. I ain't doing any more talking. And it won't do you no good to ask. They know every move a man makes. I I got nothing more to say. All I want is to stay alive. So that was that. Fear again. He was scared to death. And I couldn't very well blame him. That shot had come close... But there was one thing Hawkins hadn't thought of. I had. And I didn't like the thought. That bullet might not have been meant for him. It could have been aimed at me. Now, here's our star, Bob Bailey, to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this story. Thanks. Tomorrow night, we find out that a dead man can tell a tale. It all depends on how he died. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, the entire production is under the direction of Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs> <laughs> 